Hello everyone. Some of you might remember a while back we had uh, picked up this old uh, multi iMac and it's the uh, AF-67 and what it is is a AM CW transmitter covers 10 through 160 meters and that's why I like this little radio because it did cover 160 meters but then if y'all remember when we looked at this power supply that someone had built for it and we found lots of issues in it and you know my first thought was ain't no way I'm gonna work on this thing it's just got too many too many problems well this morning I set the thing up on the bench and I started looking at it and you know the more I looked at it the more I said well you know it's really really not too bad and you know like this relay just kind of hanging in there these terminal strips are pointing down at the uh, the bottom cover you know and it just wires bad wiring and the way things is kind of laid out in it there's two smaller transformers and the wires are just pinched in between the holes that are in here uh, zoom in on it a little bit Turn this around some. You can see uh, that there was already holes in here where they mounted the transformers, and the wires go through fine on one side, but on the other side, they're pinched in between the transformer and the edge of the chassis. Same thing with the one that's underneath this uh, board here, and there's some wires pinched up here in this top corner right here you know and that's very poor practice to do it that way but you know as long as the wires are not cut through we might can remove these transformers and uh, cut out some more material and pass the wires through with no problem and you know you just got all this bundled up wiring and then these two filter caps and when I first looked at it I thought that uh these were the, the hot sides, you know, that was going to the circuit and how long they were. Well, actually, the positive side of these two capacitors are grounded to this. So this can just be swung around and they can put in horizontally and tie right to this center terminal that goes to ground. So they ain't just flapping around in there. Then you got these two big adjustable resistors and this one here is put on with a uh, a big long screw that's just bolted on one side and, and then goes through and this side over here just kind of flaps around well all you got to do is just put a uh, the proper standoffs in there and do away with those and I think I do have some so yeah it's it's in a kind of a heck of a condition <laughs> the way it's designed but you know just might be able to clean some of this up if uh, we remember the transformers on top were at an angle and all it was it was I thought the top of the chassis was being in but it's not it was the legs on either side of the transformers was bent out so I took the bolts loose straighten them up and transformers are pretty square now so I'm going to try to just repair this thing and see what I can get it to do so you know I, how I pretty much had made up my mind just to build a new power supply until I got into looking at this thing and I said wow that's actually one two three or five transformers in this power supply and that's to get all the necessary voltages for that uh, AF-67 to even operate now you can see we got a pretty hefty plate transformer here it's a little bit overkill doesn't need to be that bad but there's a lot of odd voltages here too 
and that's why whoever built this used so many power supplies to get those voltages needed so uh, yeah I still like to build a new supply and build it a little bit more um, easier to work on let's put it that way but if this thing works it would probably be all right for just testing out the uh, multi iMac and then I'll worry about building a supply depends on you know finding the transformers uh, some of the transformers with these voltages and we'll get into that later in a you know in another video or just odd voltages and having to have those transformers built or you know starting one from scratch we might end up with something almost like this to start with so uh, we're just gonna see if we can get this thing to work safely and then uh, we'll go from there but we you know we don't want to hurt ourselves that's one thing for sure you know and I don't want no one to uh, look at what I'm doing and, and try it at home and, and hurt themselves so you know you're working on this kind of stuff take extra care because uh, <laughs> you know when you look at what somebody has done and you don't take precautions it can hurt you so as you can guys can see these two little transformers here with this one the wires coming out of this side ran completely underneath the transformer and into the other hole and then this was tightened up on the wires <laughs> unbelievable but uh what i did was removed all the screws out of these set these back and I got down in here and uh, it's not as pretty it's a little hard area to work with but I took my cut off wheel and I cut these off and then took my uh, grinder and I grind the holes out bigger on both sides so I got a big open slot here but also while I was in here looking, I kept seeing these little wires right here. And one of them is coming from an AC line. So I followed back on the power cord and this one right here. There's the uh, power cord. Let me see if I can get a better angle for you. Okay, there's a power cord uh, one side of it is connected to the fuse and then through the other side then this has this little green wire coming off of it and it goes up here and goes to this relay here and then it leaves there and it goes back down to a terminal strip now the full AC load is on them little tiny wires and this is the kind of stuff you have to look for because this is uh, absolutely incorrect so the best thing to do is remove this green wire extend this power cord on up here to this relay terminal and then go back here to this other terminal strip with some heavier gauge wire okay so I'll share a little bit of my thinking here originally as you can see right here this was the Halicrafters it's the model P-26 power supply and part of this is original I think the three transformers here were original to this uh, supply there was a couple of uh, I don't remember if it was capacitors or uh, rectifiers that was mounted over here and what they basically done was took this supply and added all this circuitry inside of it and did a lot of modifications to uh, run the transmitter so you know I still got to go in and kind of reverse engineer and, and draw up some schematics of what they've done 
inside of this. And the good thing is I have the schematic for the original Holocratzer supply. But the way this thing was so jam-packed full of stuff and everything sitting on top of each other, it was just hard to do anything with it. So the first thing I'd done after going through and, and checking and finding out what stuff is for. Now, I originally thought that these wires that was coming up to this relay was the AC power, but it's not. It goes out to this cable here that was for the PTT for a changeover relay to switch between transmit and receive. And that's what this for. Although, you know, those little green wires were not efficient for that circuit. I went ahead and changed them out. The original power cable, you know, it comes over here on the side and goes up to this tunnel strip through this fuse. <clears throat> so, the way this thing is wired from what I see, when you plug it in and you turn the switch on, it turns the filaments on. And we should um, send voltage to the filaments in the tubes of the transmitter. The first thing I did was took this rectifier board that was over here and this is the original to the Halocrafters. And these spacers were so long that it had the board over here. And then, remember, this resistor is stuck right over here next to this one. I still ain't looked to see what they're using this resistor for, but they're only using from the end tap to here the resistance. None of this part of the resistor is being used. I mean, but you know they had this one on top of this one had it separated by a piece of cardboard So what I did was I uh, removed this rectifier board and I cut a half inch off of each of the mounting studs That was holding it and that moved this over I was then able to go ahead and take everything loose and move this on over this away So that opened up that my next thing is I need to move this resistor over a little bit and then I'm gonna look at the uh, little board and what this is this is the radio shack 24 volt uh, I think it's a 24 volt transformer <laughs> and it has two relays on it and the capacitor but on the other side they got a bridge rectifier mounted on it and the board's kind of uh, I don't know it's just kind of thrown together but I do not see anything that these two relays are doing so it looks like that they disconnected these two little small relays that was on this board and they're feeding the DC power up to power this other relay that's been installed so I don't know if this was a failed attempt or it didn't work or um, the contacts weren't heavy enough in it they're saying 5 amps on the contacts but uh they have disconnected these relays, so these relays are doing nothing. There's still one wire going to one of them. No, that's actually going to the capacitor. So these relays are just, just on the board. But down here, they have a, another relay that's a very heavy duty relay, and it's a uh, 25 amp relay. And it's connected to this board, so this has been installed, and this one's been installed after this thought. So they had two relays on there. So these two has been installed. So the regulation of this is uh, running those two relays. Now probably what I'll do is strip all of this off and mount this transformer up on maybe the top or somewhere, or down here under the bottom. And then put a terminal strip with the uh, bridge rectifier circuit on it. And that will get rid of this big board that's not really needed. And taking up so much space. So that opens up even more room in the supply. <laughs> but by getting everything spread out and remounted. We're able now to you know, really go in and trace out. What's, you know, what's going on inside here. It's like this resistor they got here. Uh, it's connected to ground and it goes to the ground on this end so you know why they done that I have no idea it's it's just in between two ground points and it might have been something where they just moved it to ground and decided that it didn't work that way but 
yes yeah, it's, it's going to take a bit of uh engineering you say i got the uh wires up on one of these transformers so they're now not smashed and uh, shouldn't be any problems there alrighty um, went through this board uh, looking at how it's built and uh, we got our 120 volts coming in to the primary side of the transformer we got a secondary here that's feeding the bridge rectifier and it's kind of funny the way they did this the ground which is this little small green wire here it comes up to the output socket which goes to the radio okay so that tells me something in the radio or the transmitter is turning the output of this bridge rectifier off and on Drew a little schematic here see more of it. you can see all 120 volts come in this side of the primary got a secondary is feeding the bridge rectifier the output of the bridge rectifier has a hundred microfarad capacitor between positive and negative and this is not connected to chassis ground so that goes out to the socket with the interconnect cable to the transmitter this side it splits off uh, one side goes to this small relay the little uh, plastic case relay that's mounted in here and what this relay does is one thing when it engages it puts the 120 volts on this line cable that I was showing you earlier that goes out I guess to the relay um, for receive and transmit the uh, another set of contacts in it goes down to an RCA jack here that's just uh, all it is is just uh, grounding the center to the chassis so that's for turning something else off and on no idea why they you know they have 120 volts on one and then just a uh, closed contact for the other one so it could be to just uh, power an amp or something that needs to be you know the input needs to be grounded to come on so that could be what that's for the large relay that is uh, down in the bottom here this turns on the AC for the high voltage transformer and that's all that that large relay operates so with this thinking, uh, I don't see why I cannot do away with all this, get rid of that big board, and just mount most of this stuff on a terminal strip, the uh, bridge rectifier, and then let it feed the relays as needed, because that is, you know, taking up quite a bit of space. As you can see, just none of this is needed. Um, this transformer could be probably remounted somewhere else it doesn't have a center tap on it but it's got this uh, red wire that comes off the negative side of the bridge rectifier and all it does is come around to the negative side of that Mallory capacitor and then to the uh, positive side of the bridge rectifier so yeah, uh, you know, good thoughts, but all this could have been, you know, the transformer mounted somewhere and the uh, bridge rectifier put on the terminal strip would have saved a lot of room. I think their intentions were good at trying to use relays like this, but apparently that was a failed attempt, especially for the high voltage transformer. You just don't want to have, and I think it's around four to 500 volts that this transformer turns off and on and running it through these little relays probably wasn't a good idea so yeah so we can clean all this up just by uh, mounting a, a bridge rectifier on a little terminal strip and then wiring it up with some decent wire so that's going to 
open up a whole lot more space okay since I uh, had shortened up this studs on this rectifier board and uh, also when I did that I moved this rectifier board towards the, over to this other edge so that opens up some more space here now what I would like to do since we already have all the transformers mounted on the top I wanted to take that small transformer and mount it here so it'll be uh, open up that more space because you know there's some some real estate here that can be used now to do that this power switch would be in the way and since we moved that rectifier board there's now enough room to come over here on this edge over here and drill a hole and swing this power switch down to the side and that'll put this as being the uh, I guess you could say the front side of the power supply and then we'll be able to uh, have more real estate up here this bias part could be swung around here and put on this other side but to make this power supply look better we could cut and I'm gonna think about this over the time we could cut an aluminum plate the width of this and come up just above this um, transformer here you know and make a front panel and then if you wanted to put uh, a meter for voltage and amperage in the power supply you would have room to do that then we could build a a four-sided case to slide over and bolt in place on the top put a fan in it keep the power supply cool and just make it look a little bit better this uh, socket that's here where your radio plugs into could be moved around also to the back to uh, give it more access to it you know so you're not plugging directly into side of it so there's a lot of different things here you can do when you're <laughs> redesigning something like this um, and also you know one of the most important things when you are designing something or redes in this case redesigning something from its a you know original purpose to an intended purpose uh, think about future upgrades think about the next person that would get it after you know you're long gone um, how they're going to surface it what they're going to be able to do to keep an old vintage piece of equipment going and you know that's all in the way you design stuff this was very poorly designed or redesigned in this case um, I have never seen something so terrible but we're going to get it I'm going to have to clean up all this rust not even sure the power supply even works so that's what I'm trying to do you know minimum to it but I wanted like I said I wanted to get it so I could uh, kind of reverse engineer what's going on in here and make sure we have the right voltages to run that uh, multi mech transmitter okay guys uh, you can see things do look a little different it's cleaned up a little bit. I still have some wiring to go through and straighten out and reroute. It's just wires running everywhere. But everything appears to be where it should be as far as um, electrically. I've got this old uh, relay board removed that they had for the low voltage and to turn the relays on. Uh, that was just a little bit uncalled for. All that was replaced with this little uh, terminal strip here. You see I have the uh, four diodes on in the bridge rectifier configuration. Have the AC running into it and the uh, DC coming off and going to each relay. I've been grounded the other sides of the relay and we've got a filter capacitor mounted here on the side of it so what I did was uh, 
move that transformer I did salvage it and I have it here on uh, standoffs now this transformer was a PC mount transformer so uh, I had to put it on standoffs and then uh, attach wires to the back of it heat shrink them and run them through a hole and you can see the power switches now over here on the side of it instead of up here on the top by moving that that gave me the room looking at everything and and going through and checking for shorts I don't see any problem at all so you know you really can't without jumping out a bunch of stuff uh, fire this power supply up without it connected to the radio so I have the uh, transmitter plugged in so we're gonna go ahead and we'll reposition the camera and we're gonna fire this power supply up and see if uh, it'll come on and run well guys like I said you know I feel a little bit more safe now that I did go through this power supply and change out a bunch of stuff and uh, you know especially that uh, that low voltage board that they had in there that kind of work just uh, scares the heck out of me the way things are thrown up on there so uh, anyway everything's uh, connected up I'm going to go ahead and turn the power on and we're going to take the very yak and start bringing it up a little bit. You should be able to see lights if they're working down in here. Let's see what the meter's setting at. Put on grid current. Where well, we can see some idle grid current. That's at about 40 volts. Just let it sit here and uh, run just for a couple of seconds. And we'll keep easing the voltage up. I am starting to see some glow down in here on those meter lights or dial lights. I don't think y'all can see that on the camera. Yeah, I think it's starting to show up now in the camera. That's about 75 volts. Nothing feels warm. about 90 volts those dial lights are brightening up pretty good and there we are full voltage again uh, without keying the radio up we can't really do an easy test on the uh, high voltage without uh, just going in there and jumping things out but the radio do that I got the uh, D104 plugged in so I can stand back far enough away from it and don't have to uh, worry about it exploding in my face and I'm gonna take the D104 here and just key it the microphone to see if we hear the relays and the power supply activate oh I see grid current I hear the relay and it's not um, brightening the bulb up too bright on the uh, dim bulb tester I'm only holding down for a second at a time. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the dim buff tester out and we'll hook directly to the uh, AC outlet. Okay, I was noticing then on the spectrum analyzer when I uh, was keying the microphone. See if I can zoom y'all in on that just a little bit. At 14,250. And look at there. It is putting out a signal. It just happened to be, uh, I know this dial can't be calibrated that good. But I guess it is. The dial was sitting on 14,250. I punched 14,250 on, and it's spot on. Now this right, uh, transmitter should do a 60 watts input. So it should be 30 watts output on AM. Okay, I got the big giant watt meter in focus. Keen it up and uh. Check. Tune it up. We'll dip the plate. We're getting about 15 watts key. See if it'll modulate. Test one, two, check. Yeah, about 30 to 35 watts on modulation. Yeah, she's not a powerhouse, but uh, <laughs> it does uh, seem to work. And that's just the way that these things are made. Cut the volume up here. Check one, two. Check one, two. One, two. Check one, two. And the audio doesn't sound bad at all. Sounds pretty good over that feedback. We really got to find out what to do about these knobs. The uh, chrome has gone off of them. I don't know if we can just sand it off and paint it or get something and replace them back. The one down here is completely gone. Let's see what I can come up with those. A little bit of rust around the washers on the switches over here. And this thing has not been cleaned up at all. And you see how yellow the uh, dial glass is. That's all got to be cleaned up. So, yeah, this thing's got to be stripped and cleaned pretty good. But as far as having to do any repairing, you know, at the front, I mean, the uh, I believe this is going to clean up and it's going to look good. Uh, all your lettering is on this plate here doesn't have anything that's messed up on it you know as far as the uh, lettering and stuff so it looks pretty good anyway like I said I got it set on modulator current and key it up and you can see that needle just a swinging now it's not going to be like those Johnson Vikings where you're going to see it just hammer over uh, it's just the way this circuit is designed it just shows you uh, forward modulation so yeah that seems to be working good well guys, you know, it really surprised me that this thing worked. I mean, just after doing the little bit of work I did to it. Now, I don't know. It, it may have worked from the start. I was not going to find out. Not the way that power supply was just... Things scared me. I'll be honest with you. It just didn't uh, look that great. But, uh, again, I feel safer now. And it comes out the transmitter does work. Now, I'll probably need to go in, you know, and do some fine-tuning on this power supply and make sure the uh, voltages are working right. But I'll show you something that was interesting that they did on the, the uh, low-voltage bias. So, as you can see right here on the uh, top, and my pointy stick is way over here, we've got this big wear-around power resistor here. And underneath we got this big resistor here and then this one that has a open tap on this end 
but a wire connected to the uh, slide tap in the other end. Well, actually, this one starts at ground. And all these are tied in series and then back down to the uh, circuit. So it looks like they're using these three resistors to drop the voltage down. I think it's on the, uh, I think it was negative 250 volts. I'll have to go back and look at the uh, original power supply schematic of this, but I want to say it's somewhere around two, negative 200 volts. Been a couple of days since I looked at it, but we'll check and see. But yes, this this was their solution to get the uh, the voltage correct by adding all these big resistors, and then they I guess they slid this one down to finally get what they needed. So you know, big 50 watt resistors. It's 150 watts of uh, power handling to better get the voltage from what they need. Well now that we have a uh, power supply that will work, I'm uh, looking here under the bottom of this AF67 and I'm telling you it is completely clean and look like it's never been touched under here. We do have a uh, few electrolytics that could be replaced. And there's a uh, 10 microfarad at 450. There's a 10 at 50. There's an 8 at 450. And I'm not sure what this uh, cap here is. This one looks like it may have been replaced at one time. I'll have to look back on the schematic because the uh, writing is gone from it. But yeah, it's, it's very clean under here. Um, no dust, uh, no corrosion, even the switches are nice and clean. So only a few electrolytics here to replace. Probably have to end up checking a lot of these old resistors and see if any of them, uh, you know, has came out of uh, tolerance. Because that's, you know, is one problem with carbon content resistors. But yeah, not a lot to do to the radio, looks like. As far as bottom side, now the top side is going to need some cleaning and lubricating, especially the uh, old chain drive here. That's going to be fun to tear apart and clean and uh, get all this surface dust and everything off of it. And uh, one thing that we find interesting is there's three 9 volt batteries here in parallel and that is for the bias circuit and that is uh, these are not the original batteries but the original radio transmitter did have a battery for the bias supply and that's what they used was you know a battery in there and then these batteries last forever just curious to see I know the radio was working it would be very curious to see uh, what the voltage is on this battery these 9 volt batteries I'm pretty much say they're probably still good Nine point five volts. No telling how long they've been in there. So I went ahead and replaced the uh, auto electrolytics. This ten microfarad. You can see it's so much smaller than the uh, other one that was in here. And replaced this uh, ten at four fifty and this eight at four fifty. This has already been replaced. It's just a point one at 600 volts and it checks fine so I'm not going to bother replacing that one because no need of uh, wasting a cap if it's not needed. But one thing that I really got to do is try to get this top of this unit cleaned up a little bit. And as you can see we have a lever here on the top 
to set the uh, bands and it is very very stiff you should be able to change it without having to grab the transmitter but in this case you can't so what I'm gonna do is just leave it right on 20 meters it's kind of hard to see the uh, the markings up here because the uh, dial glass is gone black or yellowed so this is gonna have to come off and be cleaned up anyway but I think I can go ahead and just uh, take these gears loose remove this arm and get this apart so we can get in here and lube and clean everything to get it back working so to do that we need to remove these three gears and this lever now for some reason see if I can get zoomed in on that a little better you can see right there this has been soldered together with something so the chain the nut Yep, the chain and the nut is soldered to this lever. So by removing the screw, it's still not going to come off. So what I'm hoping I can do is remove the uh, three gears. Here, there's a set screw in each one of them. And probably work these up and take this arm loose. Now up here on the front, there's a, there's a stud that goes through that this uh, knob is mounted on. But it's bolted on this side, so I be, should be able to unbolt that. So we're going to see if we can go ahead and get these loosened up and removed. Okay, I want to go ahead and clean up some of this stuff. And uh, I think some of these little brackets I'm going to sand down and see how they look. And uh, if they look too bad, I'm just going to go ahead and repaint them. Try to clean these gears up. Now to take this chain mechanism off, normally you would unbolt this here and you'll be able to get the chain off, but again someone has soldered all this together. And so the chain, the two nuts, are soldered to the bracket. And I'm not going to bother with desoldering that. If you remove the screw, nothing's going to happen. It's still going to stay on. So to take this off, we're just going to loosen up these set screws. And each one of the gears and lift one of the gears up enough to get the chain off now i got this thing straight in the center in on 20 meters so all of these other uh, wafer switches are set for 20 meters now with the exception of this gear here on the back these two have detents in it so they mostly will not move this one this wafer switch has no lock system in it and what it is the contact the movable contact touches two terminals at a time each time you move it and when you take this loose this shaft will spin freely so what i done was just took my little cutoff wheel and put a little line in the top of it so i always have a reference mark and i know which way it needs to go back together when i put this on Another thing we've we done is uh, I've got a black mark on the chain and the gear on each side where they go together and that'll help keep it aligned. Also now when I clean this up and paint it that's going to come off but I'll be able to figure out which way they need to go. Okay I've got all three set screws loose and also removed this um, acorn nut that was back here. So all we should be able to do is just uh, come over here and lift this gear up. And we can pull it right out. Take the chain off. Take that gear off. Okay, 
okay I've already removed the uh, shaft and the knob that was on the front it's just bolted on with two taps on each side and we can get that off I'll go ahead and I'm gonna remove both of these brackets so we can get those cleaned up as well okay guys well at least now we do have a working power supply and the transmitter does work so uh, I feel a lot safer now since this power supply is uh, kind of put back together uh, a little bit better than what it was in fact I think it uh, should work a lot better now and I don't have to worry about a shock hazard so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video on this one for right now and to uh, get you know some more time to put into it and then we'll go ahead and tear this thing apart and recap it and get everything up to par on it clean these switches and probably end up repainting the outer case the uh, front just going to need a good cleaning and then see what I'm going to do about these uh, knobs where the uh, chrome has gone off of. I got an idea for that and I'll show that with you. We'll get the yellow out of this uh, lens and get it cleaned up and polished to get, we get that scratch out of it. But you know this thing is old so it'll take a little while. So okay guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, until the next video, you know, I get a chance to do on this one. I've got a bunch more that we'll be working on. And, you know, I'll throw this kind of stuff like this uh, in between those fillers here and there. So, uh, y'all have a good day and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye now.